the lights, the bright lights, the tight, the crowd lights, where you at, ballers? Ladies love me and men, they wanna be me, they pay to come see me, where you at, ballers? Knicks at Hornets, 7 o'clock, Spectrum Center, NBA Shot Clock, Monday, January 29th, 2024. Top look in this game, over 223 points. Let's discuss. Fourth matchup of the year, Knicks sit here 3-0 against this team this year, and the total's telling us a great story. Go back to November 12th at Madison Square Garden, 236 points, quickly followed up a week later in Charlotte with 230 points. The lines in those games were 228 and a half and 226 and a half. The third matchup, however, the books moved the line down to 222. The story was correct as the game went drastically under 115 to 91. Now off that under, we see a line coming back up at open to 224 and a half and this game should be played much more wide open without Julius Randle in the lineup for New York tonight. Charlotte has the 30th defensive rating in the league. They do not close out. They like to run. They're a young team, and this number is telling us an overstory at 7 o'clock. Buy it, live it, love it, and let's dominate. Charlotte, New York, over 223. What's going on, beautiful people? Junior Brown back once again with NBA Shot Clock on this Monday, January 29th. More free picks for y'all. Today we're rocking with the over 225 and a half in the Clippers Cavaliers. I think this number is just way too low for two of the hottest teams in the league. For those of you that have been rocking with us for a while, you'll know that I've been mentioning that Cleveland is right up there with all of the best teams in the league, including the uh, Clippers, who since December 1st have won 84% of their games. The Cavaliers have won 70% of their games. 22-4 and four compared to 17-7, and seven, two of the most consistent teams in the league. Now, the Cavs are the dogs here, but they've only lost two home games since December 1st, so I have a really hard time fading them. At the same time, the Clippers have shown us that they're a true championship contender when they have all of their pieces. The average NBA game has a total of 231, and I just think that for two teams that are playing this well, this, the under does not have any value to me. Now, I do see it more likely that the Clippers shut down the Cavaliers' offense because of the way the two rosters are built. But again, that's just a guess. We're not in the guessing business here. We're in the investment business. And I'm going to go ahead and invest in the over 225 and a half in the Cavaliers' Clippers. Let's cash this ticket, y'all. Pelicans at Celtics, 7.30. TD Garden, Monday shot clock. It is January 29th, 2024. The buy hat is engaged. Boston, first quarter, minus two and a half, one unit. Let's discuss. Boston comes into tonight's game off only their second home loss of the entire season. A highly, highly lackluster game on Saturday against the Clippers in which Boston shot far, far below their season average from the field and from three. Boston will bounce back. Boston is 8-2 ATS off an outright loss this year. And more importantly, when they bounce back, they bounce back in the first quarter. New Orleans comes in here in the second game of a trip off a blowout loss at Milwaukee. And you go back to last year to see if there's a pattern here. There is. Boston got New Orleans both times in the first quarter last year. On the road, they put up 40. At home, they put up 35. Immediate regression northward in their field goal percentage will come in an angry first quarter at 7.30. TD Garden, by the first quarter, an official play, and let's dominate. What's going on, y'all? Junior Brown back with NBA Shot Clock on this Monday, January 29th, with a pick that I absolutely love Utah Jazz over the Brooklyn Nets. And I'm going to be short and sweet here because I do not understand this line. How the Nets are favored over a Jazz team that have been playing at near the top of the league for at least a good six to eight weeks makes no sense to me whatsoever. The Jazz, the thing about the Jazz is this. Laurie Markkinen is a borderline all-star. I think if he was in the Eastern Conference, he would be an all-star. And everybody else is closer to average than not. 
But what they do have is two very solid lineups. Their starting lineup is solid. When their bench comes in, the level doesn't drop that much. So for 48 minutes, you're getting consistent effort from two different units. And what their coach does is, well, between these eight to 10 guys that I play, whatever five guys are playing the best during the first 45 minutes, those are the guys that are gonna end the game. The New Jersey Nets have none of that synergy, none of that continuity. Give me the Jazz in my best bet of the day. Let's go ahead and cash this ticket, y'all. Suns at Heat, out of conference basketball, NBA shot clock, another top play. The buy hat is engaged. We're buying the Miami Heat at minus four, one unit. Talk about a buy low. Miami comes into tonight's game 0-6 straight up last six and 0-6 ATS, situationally catching themselves in trap spots, fatigue spots, injury spots, look-aheads, and just getting completely outclassed by the Celtics. The Suns come into tonight's game on a third and four road road back-to-back -back off back-to-back -back tight losses against Indiana, and I should say a blowout loss against Orlando yesterday. The fatigue will catch up to them, and this team appears to be capped in a small window on Eastern time. These teams did play in recent history on January 5th in Phoenix, and Phoenix got Miami with significant margin, 113 to 97. Key point in that game, no Jimmy Butler, no Kevin Durant. And now tonight's line is telling us a heavy Miami story. At minus four, suggestive of a 10 point win. Buy this one tonight, let's back the home team, let's dominate Miami, enjoy it, and let's go. What's going on y'all? Junior Brown back with my third pick of the day on this Monday, January 29th for NBA Shot Clock. We're rocking with the under 227 and a half in the Lakers Rockets game. This one seems pretty straightforward to me. These teams haven't played for two months, so it doesn't make it easy to cap. The average total in the three games that these teams have played is 211. And to me, there's a very, very specific reason why. And it's the Rockets' transition defense. The Lakers run the second most in the league, meaning their transition frequency is the second highest in the league. They run on almost 18% of all possessions. They're sixth in the league in offensive, offensive efficiency in transition situations. The problem they've run into is that the Rockets are an elite transition defensive team. There is not a close second. The average NBA team right now is scoring about 127 points per 100 possessions. The Rockets are only allowing 107 points per 100 possession in transition. And in these three games against the Lakers, they've held the Lakers, who are averaging 132 per 100 possessions in transition on the season, to 96 points per 100 in transition in these three games, which is why the total has been all the way down to 211. I don't see that changing. Ime Odoka has come in, changed the culture of this team. He's recognized the one strength the Lakers have on offense, and he's forced them to be an efficient half-court team, which they are not. Unfortunately for Ime, his team is not an efficient half-court team either, which is why the Lakers are 2-1 and one on the season against the Rockets. But we're not taking this game straight up. We're taking the total. Under 227 and a half, y'all. Let's go ahead and cash this ticket. Kings Grizzlies, 8 o'clock, FedEx Forum, Memphis, Tennessee. A top look in this game, under 226 and a half. What's going on tonight in this game? Sacramento comes in here on the third game of a seven-game trip. Off two bloated totals in Golden State and at Dallas. This is a rematch of a game played on New Year's Eve 2023, a game in which Sacramento blew out Memphis 123-92. to Ultimately, in that game, the line was very high at 241.5 points, and books are moving this down at open to 230 with precipitous downward movement coming in market steam, mostly sharp action. And you ask yourself why? It's pretty simple. No John Morant, no Desmond Bain, no Marcus Smart. A roster absolutely demoralized with injuries, particularly in their offensive quality. Since the injury to Desmond Bain, this team is averaging 105 points per game. They're 30th in the league in points per game over the course of the season. This will be a rock fight. Buy this one tonight. 
under 226 and a half, and let's cash. What's up, y'all? Junior Brown back with NBA Shot Clock on this Monday, January 29th with my fourth pick of the day. We're rocking with the Thunder minus two and a half. I was on the Wolf side because I think this is closer to a 50-50 contest, and if you're going to give me odds better than 50-50, I have a responsibility as a capper to take that. But it's not that simple, right? As cappers, we bet lines, we bet situations, or we bet a combination of both in an ideal world. Well, if I'm looking at the situation, the situation is Minnesota is not playing the best basketball. Minnesota does not have harmony in their locker room. Minnesota's coach does not seem happy with the roster and the way that these guys are playing. Mike Conley's absence, which really shouldn't matter that much to an elite team, matters a lot to this team if you look at their numbers with him and their numbers without him. So I don't like a lot of things surrounding this Minnesota team. And I'm going to say one more thing. This is a revenge game spot for the Thunder because Ant-Man might be my favorite player to watch in the NBA. He's so special. He's so spectacular. And I think he's going to be the face of the league one day. He was crying like a little hoe when they lost to the Thunder in the last game. Talking about, oh, SGA gets so many foul calls. It's so hard to go. Bro, make your free throws and y'all don't lose the game. So he's blaming the calls on SGA instead of blaming himself for missing clutch free throws? Crazy. And if you think the Thunder weren't paying attention to that and don't have something to say about that, we'll see you tonight. Give me the Thunder, minus two and a half. Let's cash this ticket, y'all. Wizards at Spurs, eight o'clock, Frost Bank Center, San Antonio, Texas. We're taking the Spurs, minus three and a half, one unit. The Spurs come into tonight's game 10 and 36 straight up, however, showing signs at home. 9, 12, and 1 ATS in their home gym, 5 and 2 last 7, and 2 and 0 straight up in their last two, coming off a highly impressive outright win against Minnesota last weekend. The line here is telling you an incredibly strong story. When you see a young team led by Victor Wembanyama laying points at home. The last two times they were a home favorite, the books certainly knew what they were talking about. A 36 point win against Charlotte and another blowout against Portland. The opponent, the opponent tonight comes into the game in a road road sequence off of an outright win in Detroit. We like information and we like patterns this is the second time this year that Washington won outright as an underdog in Detroit. The last time they stayed on the road and went to Orlando next and proceeded to get blown out 139 to 120. Speaking of Washington losing and losing with emphasis against the spread, go back to Saturday, Saturday January 20th. The Spurs did beat Washington on the road as an underdog. Books are moving this line with heavy strength to the Spurs. Telling you, Washington is not getting revenge on the road, and the Spurs' upward movement is real. Buy this one tonight, minus three and a half, NBA Shot Clock, a top play, let's dominate. What's going on, y'all? Junior Brown back once again with NBA Shot Clock on this Monday, January 29th with another lean. Not an official play, y'all. This is just a lean. Dallas minus five over Orlando. The Magic are playing in their second game of a back-to-back, -back, a spot they have not been good in all season long. Two and seven in the second game of back-to-backs. It's where their field goal percentage is the lowest of the, of the season. It's where they score the least amount of points. It's where they grab the least amount of rebounds. And it's a spot where they foul the most. Everything just looks bad for them in this spot. And on top of it being the second game of a back-to-back, -back, it's their third game in four nights. Now, the reason I'm not on this is because Dallas might be one of the hardest teams to cap in the league, if not the hardest, for one very specific reason. They've had 23 different starting lineups in 41 games played. So it's very difficult to come to any meaningful conclusions when their two best players, Kyrie and Luka, have only played together uh, a handful of times. Until I see more continuity from their core, I'm not going to get involved in that many Dallas games. That being said, them being at home with Orlando in the spot that they find themselves... My lean is Dallas, minus the five points. Let's cash these tickets, y'all. Bucks at Nuggets, big time ball, nine o'clock, ball arena, Denver, Colorado. A top play, buying the Nuggets at minus four. 
This conversation opens with the marquee nature of this matchup, potentially a finals preview, and where the Nuggets perform excellently in their home gym. They are 4-2 ATS against the Eastern Conference, and they show up in these moments with emphasis. Milwaukee is in game one of a five-game Western trip, having only played twice on the road at the West this year. 0-2 ATS versus far worse opponents. Didn't cover a big line at the Spurs on January 4th. Outright loss as a significant favorite at Houston two nights later. Last year when these teams played, the home team had margin, and that was the story consistently. On January 25th last year, Denver took a margin loss in Milwaukee, and then Milwaukee two months later on March 25th got absolutely blown out in Denver, 129 to 106. The line in that particular game had Denver graded minus one and a half. This is moved up to minus four, with books telling us the same story is supposed to continue. Expect margin tonight, expect a blowout potential, and the buy hat is engaged. NBA shot clock, nine o'clock, Denver minus four. What's going on y'all? Junior Brown back with NBA shot clock on this Monday. January 29th, and I wanted to share this lean with y'all. It's not an official, it's a lean. 76ers over 117 and a half team total against the Blazers. The Blazers are consistently inconsistent, and I can't get involved with the spread or the game total because I just have no idea what this team is going to do from one night to the next. The 76ers starting five is the most efficient scoring offense in the league. The 76ers offense is one of the best in the league. Joel Embiid is playing like a man possessed, and he's actually having the best offensive season to date in NBA history. That's right, in NBA history, and tonight he's going up against DeAndre Ayton. It's never that simple, obviously, guys, so I want to dig into these numbers more, but for now, my lean is 76ers over 117.5. Let's cash this ticket, y'all.